Should you sign a prenup? Hi there, men's dating coach Harry Wilmington here, founder of introvertdatingsuccess.com, and today I'll be talking about whether or not it's in your best interest to sign a prenuptial agreement before getting married. Also, how your woman might react to it, and I'll be reading a message from a man whose woman completely changed her feelings about it for an unexpected and possibly selfish reason. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon to be notified of new videos. Also, go to the website to watch my free video training, How to Get Attractive, Feminine, Emotionally Stable Women Dying to Respond to Your First Messages on Dating Apps Without Using Sleazy Pickup Lines. And now, let's check out that clip. Should you sign a prenup before getting married? And there's a guy here that's having a situation with his fiance whereby she initially didn't want to sign a prenup and now she does for a very interesting reason. So this guy says, a little background here is that I make around $250,000 a year. My fiance makes around $65,000 a year. We've both been divorced. Oftentimes, for people that have already been through this process of divorce, they understand how messy and how cataclysmic the event of divorce can be already on your emotions, obviously, but also when it comes to dealing with splitting up the assets, going to court, dealing with legal fees. And these are things that you have to divvy out, whether it's like, are you gonna split everything right down the middle? If there's kids involved, there's gonna be alimony. How much alimony is coming from the dad or from the mom? There's a wide variety of issues that come up that a lot of people are blindsided by when the person first got married, they didn't ever think about them possibly breaking up with the person they're with. Like they really have thought it was gonna be forever and therefore there was no need to worry about the, the outs of what could happen if it doesn't work out because most men, especially go into the marriage thinking, I'm gonna be the man, she's gonna like me for me and it's gonna work out so great that there's no need to think about things like divorce, so why would I plan for one? Like they have this thought of like, if I start planning for divorce, then it's most likely gonna happen. And so these, since these two have been through a divorce, this guy's already been through one and realized, oh, you know what? I went in the first time and did not prep myself for anything bad to happen. But even if you go on with, to a marriage with the best of intentions, bad things could happen. Let me make sure that I'm set. So that's why he brought this up. I asked for a prenup protecting my existing assets, two rental properties worth around 400,000 together, my retirement account, my house which I live, existing savings, uh, and just sentimental things. Uh, I offered to pay for a lawyer for her and make anything earned after the wedding fair game in a divorce split. So basically saying like, Whatever I, whatever we come to with it, whatever we come to the marriage with, we get to keep that stuff on our own. And then when we, as we, once we get married, anything that we do during that time, we'll split if this doesn't work out. So he says, in my previous divorce, my ex took a lot that I had before we ever, ever even met each other and took a lot of things with sentimental value just to hurt me. And this is the thing, guys, that you're not prepared for. Is you're thinking right now, in terms of the woman you're with being a rational person, that would not do you emotional harm and would only want the best for you. And that can be very true up until the point where divorce is thrown out there, where now there are hurt feelings and she is feeling bitter and she wants to get you back and retaliate. And that sweet, kind woman you married might turn into a woman that is going to drag you through the courts and want to get a lawyer to take you for everything that you've got. Okay. And that's what this woman did. Like he, she just took stuff that was his because he cared about it and she wanted to see him hurt. This is the thing that legitimately could happen if things in your marriage do not turn out the way you want them to. I floated the idea of a prenup and she was not okay with it. It hurt her feelings and she said, I was planning for a divorce if I want a prenup. Now, mind you, this woman has already been through a divorce before, okay? But you gotta think about why she's saying this. The reality is that in this country, when a divorce happens, the courts traditionally are gonna be more in favor of the woman's side of things. We already get a bad rep for, if we, if we any kind of divorce happens at all, it's automatically our fault. We must have been the bad guy. We did something to make her feelings get hurt. We must have possibly cheated on her. And so she deserves to be taken care of. The majority of financial burden and pain, if this thing goes away, is gonna fall towards the guy. And she knows this because she went through a divorce. Now he doesn't say in terms of their divorce, what she was putting her ex-husband through because women will typically come to the table and say, oh, this guy hurt me and it didn't work out. So we just broke up and yada, yada, yada. And people are gonna always make themselves the hero in their own story. So she's gonna make it look like whatever happened, it was more or less the guy's fault and I was the victim and how dare. But that could be the story she's telling you. That does not mean that you wanna fall for that. Because again, 
if a divorce comes up, you're going to be the bad guy now. And she's, you're going to be the one that she's telling everybody, he hurt me, he did this, whatever. And she's going to come with the story and the sad tears and all this stuff. And you're going to be left out in the cold. And I've seen this firsthand. I've seen friends of mine who were nice guys that married nice women that when the divorce came, they wanted to, you know, be able to have a balance of things and want to see their children and want to do stuff. And the woman was just like, no, can't happen. I'm going to fight you. I'm not going to let this thing, these things happen. And this is real life, people. So just be mindful that that could be a thing and that the woman that you love right now could turn and you might want to be prepared for that in the event that it does. Continuing on, so so she hurt feelings. That's what all y'all here too say. Oh, this hurts my feelings. How could you think? And because for them, it's an emotional decision. It's like, you're almost saying, I don't trust you and therefore we need to get this thing. And that's how they take it. You're just looking at it like it's a business decision. You know, when you go into any kind of business with anybody, contracts, I'm in Hollywood here. I get into business people, contracts. You sign out things because... You hope for the best, but if things don't go the way that you expect them to, or one person says, this isn't working for me anymore, you need to have a workout that's going to be beneficial to everybody and not keep you stuck in a situation that's bad or worse, makes you financially responsible overall for this breakup happening. Because anyway, I'll, I'll finish reading this up. Uh, she had this idea that when we married, everything becomes ours, which is typically a, a thought a lot of women have is that, oh, yours becomes mine and I can take half of that when we, I leave you later. Uh, we've been dating for four years and had very few bumps in the road, so I don't see a super high risk of divorce, but I do acknowledge it's there. Anyways, I love her, and I said, sure. So he's saying, basically, he said, sure, let's not get a prenup. I know it's all about love and whatever, and she was able to initially talk him out of this idea, which women are great at that because we look at them and we're like, oh, we don't want to hurt their feelings. They have these nice figures, and they're so sweet, and I don't want to hurt, hurt her by bringing this idea up or, or make her think that I don't trust her. And that's the trick. They're going to make you feel like you're bad because you want to get your ducks in a row for the end times in case the end times happen. And in her emotional state, she's thinking this means you don't trust her and you don't love her as much as you do or you're thinking bad things are going to happen. And that's a fear that a lot of women will bring to the table. Let them bring that fear and say, hey, babe, I do love you, but I recognize realistically the divorce rate in this country is like above 50 or 60 percent at this point. And then even the marriages that stay together, they're not always the happiest of marriages. So there's enough statistical data out there that says a lot of people go into marriages with good intentions, but it ends up not working out the way they do. And so I'm going into this thinking we're going to get along great, but I also have to be mindful that anything could change and things could change. Think about this guy. You could have a woman that loves you to death, cares about you, and then she has her first kid, she has postpartum depression, she never gets out of it, she's constantly yelling at you and mad at you now, and now she's saying, I'm not happy, I wanna leave. And it's nothing you did, it could just be postpartum, it could be life situation changing, but now it's like she decides she wants to leave. And you have no con contingency plan. So you didn't bring it up, she did, but now, because she brings it up and wants it, now there's no prenup involved and she can just get anything out of you that she wants. And again, it happens all the time. But this is this is taking into account the things that he brought. So again, let's recap. He said he has assets he wants to protect, his retirement account, his house, savings, etc. And she's like, but but feelings, and I get hurt, and oh my god. Okay. Fast forward a couple months, her grandmother abruptly died. Wasn't expected. Grandmother was quite healthy before, had a heart attack. Apparently, the grandmother left the entire estate to her, and it's worth roughly. $800,000. Now, the tables have turned and she wants a prenup protecting, quote, these assets from me, which I was fine with, but she doesn't want to sign my prenup in return for that. Her reasoning is that her grandmother wouldn't have wanted to, her wealth to, quote, leave her direct family and, that's, and that there's a reason it was left all to me and not my siblings or parents, end quote, and that the prenup must not have been important to me because I threw out the idea after minimal pushback. So there's a few things here. One, that pushback that she gave him was a test. This is an example of what I, what happens when uh, women test. It's called testing your masculine strength. They come to you, they throw in the pity tears, and they see if that's going to sway you to change your mind. And when you do that, you lose, okay? Because they're not looking for a guy that's easily swayed because if she can easily sway you, she's gonna think, what other things outside of me could he be easily swayed by that could result in us not being protected, us losing money, et cetera, et cetera. And then secondly, notice how quick she was to change her mind as soon as the idea of the prenup now benefits her. 
So beforehand, when he had 400K in houses and he had his little assets and savings here and there, oh, I, I don't think we should have a prenup because secretly she's like, I want some of that. But now, now that she has $800,000 to lose, now she's like, oh, wait, you know what? We do need to have a prenup. We should we should totally sign something because, you know, if, if something doesn't work out, I'm, my family wants me to keep this money and it is my money. It's not it's not our money, even though she earlier said that coming into a marriage, she thought that everything that he owned would be ours. But now this money that she's getting bringing isn't going to be ours. It's going to be mine. If the shoe were reversed and it worked in her favor, more often than not, Women would be fine. You got to think about in today's society, there are a lot of women that have higher paying jobs than men, whether it's like they're lawyers, they're in high positions in, in certain businesses and offices, they're doctors, whatever. They're making two, 300,000 a year. These women will meet a guy that's only making 80 or 90,000, which is still a pretty good amount, but it's like, it's still less than hers. And she'll have no problem bringing to the table, hey, we should have a prenup because, you know, these are kind of my assets and, you know, I want to make sure whatever. But when it's reversed and it's you, understand there's going to be some pushback. There's going to be these feelings that are thrown at you. There's going to be these things that are going to be told to you to see if you're going to switch and change your mind because she knows that if she can do that, that she's going to have a bigger payout if it doesn't work out. And I want you guys to be mindful of that, okay? Is that ultimately, this is all business. When it comes to things in a marriage like money and assets, those are not emotional things. Those are tangible assets that if the marriage doesn't work out, you need to protect to be able to continue to keep those or have a more fair split on your end versus her taking all this stuff. So he says, I'm at a loss here. In one regard, I'm glad we have we had prenup discussions before because it brought out these sides of us. But I'm really wondering if this four-year relationship that has been full of nothing but love and support for each other until now is even salvageable. Uh, she's not willing to budge on her own prenup like I was, and I'm finding the whole thing very frustrating. So these are the kind of discussions that it's important to have before you're married because just financial discussions in general, uh, a big reason that, that people break up in marriages is because they don't agree on certain financial things. And so the earlier you can get that talked about, preferably before you get married, then those things will already be established in terms of like the kind of assets you guys have, who's paying the bills, who's going to look after the, the money, who's going to like, you know, do whatever with those various money accounts, those need to be discussed. But in terms of prenup stuff, like I don't care if you don't have like, $10 in the bank, you have like $8 in the bank, okay? That might be the $8 you want to protect, okay? And I like what the guy said earlier talking about how he wanted to have it where they have their own assets protected coming into the marriage, but then anything they earn during the marriage will be an even split. That to me is a fair assessment. Ultimately though, wanting a prenup or not wanting a prenup is a very much an emotional conversation that you need to be able to have with your significant other prior to getting married because that is a thing that I, nobody ever plans for the worst thing to happen or the end of a marriage. But again, most just, just like building a business, when you're building a business, most people aren't planning in the process of that business being built for it to end. They're hoping that it's going to work out, but they're also very mindful that most businesses don't make it past year five, okay? Most marriages by year seven are dissolved. There's that seven year itch that happens where they're both kind of thinking like, I don't want to be in this anymore. And so that's a realistic thing that could come up. So you now might think things are going to be good. You seven years from now might realize either you or her want to get out. And if that happens, you're going to be so much happier that you prepared an out plan in the event that that were to happen, even though you're hoping for the best. Now that you've heard from me, I'd like to hear from you. Will you sign a prenup? Why or why not? If you're watching on YouTube, leave your comments below or write me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. Are you ready to learn killer icebreakers that attract women on dating apps? Go to introvertdatingsuccess.com right now to watch my free video training, how to get attractive, feminine, emotionally stable women dying to respond to your first messages on dating apps without using sleazy pickup lines. This will give you key secrets to sparking attraction and conversations with women online the smart way. If you like this video, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified about future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.